Alright guys, it's been a few days since the last DK Metcalf video, so I figured it was time to make another one, because honestly right now there isn't a whole lot else going on with this team that's interesting. The free agency stuff, the party's basically over, we're either at the end of Wave 2 or Wave 3, and honestly, this team, they don't have a lot of money, they shouldn't be spending big money in free agency right now anyway. This should be a gap year of sorts. We shouldn't be spending big money on anything, for the most part, unless we suddenly got a quarterback, but that can't happen now. So there's not a lot going on there. The draft stuff is heating up, but right now all we have to work with is speculation and guesses and rumors. So that's going on, and of course that always carries a pretty high level of interest, but I want to talk more about this DK Metcalf thing, because other than the draft, this is really all there is to talk about right now. I, I don't think there's anybody else on this team that makes sense for an extension at this point in time. Uh, I don't... Uh, may, maybe you could talk about some of the guys that you want to cut, but we don't even know if the team is considering doing that. We know the team is trying to figure out what to do with Metcalf. So I want to take some time to talk about this, because uh, I made a video about this a few days ago, and... I said what I said in that video, and I'll stand by most of it. I would not trade Metcalf. I wouldn't do it. I know the extension is going to put a dent in your pocketbook, but here's the thing. Metcalf is still 24 years old. He doesn't turn 25 until December. So <clears throat> he is actually younger than a decent chunk of the players in this draft. Not the blue chippers. Like, like Drake London is going to be 21 when he plays his first NFL game. I, I understand that. But Metcalf is not at all old. He's not somebody like uh, Dwayne Eskridge, who's going to be 28 by the time he gets to his fourth NFL season or whatever. It's not like that. DK Metcalf is still really young. Still 24. And you don't have a big tag a big price tag on anybody on this team right now, so don't act like you don't have money. You traded away Russell Wilson. We're paying him this year, but in future years, we don't have that quarterback right now, and unless Drew Locke suddenly turns into Jay Cutler or something and puts together a really good season for us, we're not going to for several years. So you've got this window where you can afford a guy like a DK Metcalf because you're not paying a quarterback. And then you have all the other stuff, too. This guy's very productive. This guy's made an all-pro team. This guy has over 3,000 yards in three seasons, et cetera, et cetera. He's great. So I would keep Metcalf. However, I can't lie when I looked at things a few days ago, maybe a week ago, and it seemed like the energy was starting to move towards a Metcalf trade being in the works. You had... John and Pete using the same language they used with Wilson with regards to Metcalf, basically saying it's our intention to keep him. Like, that has to be intentional, right? They literally used the exact same word they used with Wilson there. And then you had uh, John Schneider pulling his 80-year-old boomer who doesn't understand why the glass of coca-cola costs more than a nickel now thing oh we didn't understand that receivers are gonna make so much money now um for I, I guess nobody in this front office knows how to do any math but anyway it seemed like a trade could be coming for multiple reasons and i would say that there was a point maybe five, six, seven days ago when I thought maybe the trade was becoming more likely than not. But over the last few days, the energy has started to shift the other way. Uh, first, we had this. Now, granted, this is more just funny than anything else, right? I'm not going to sit here and act like this is anything meaningful or definitive. But when Met the rumors about <clears throat> Metcalf potentially getting traded started coming out, Metcalf tweeted this out, haven't heard anything per me. Now, this doesn't mean he won't get traded. This doesn't say anything to what the team might be doing. What I will say, though, is it does seem to indicate that Metcalf has some sort of desire to be here. He likes it here. He wants to be here. This is not a situation where he's demanding out because we don't have a quarterback. No, he. 
this tells me that he's at least amenable to the idea of being here and has no problem with it. So that part of it is kind of nice. And then you had this from uh, Rappaport, or well, through Condota, but from Rappaport ultimately. He's the one who initially reported that teams were calling Seattle about trading for Metcalf. Rappaport came out at about the same time, and obviously what he said here was not nearly as headline-grabbing, so it didn't get the immediate attention. But Rappaport did say, I think they want to get a deal done. I think they end up doing it, but until they do, teams are going to keep calling. Which makes it sound like the impetus behind a potential Metcalf trade is coming from the suitors, not the Seahawks. And this was in relation to both Metcalf and A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown being a player who was in a very similar situation to Metcalf. Third uh, receiver entering his fourth year trying to get paid. So, <clears throat> seems like the energy shifting, right? Now, again, I will admit, I will acknowledge the fact that it seemed like the energy was shifting against a Russell Wilson trade. The team kept trying to shut down the talk of Russell Wilson trade, and then we woke up one morning and it just happened. So, are is this kind of a futile effort trying to decipher all this stuff and putting it all together and and trying to read the tea leaves here when we know that this team has already lied to us very, very definitively a month ago? Probably, but we're still going to try because it's the best we can do, right? We got to sift through this stuff and and do the best we can. So, it seems like the Seahawks are not really thinking about dealing him that much right now because uh, if you go forward a little bit from even this tweet, we had this a couple days ago. The Seahawks reportedly turned down the 10th overall pick from the Jets for Metcalf, which sounds really interesting <clears throat> until you come to yesterday when it was reported that there was no truth to that rumor. The Jets did not offer the number 10 pick to the Seahawks for Metcalf, per multiple sources. The Jets are interested in Metcalf, but there have been no offers because Seattle's not accepting offers. So, based off the stuff I've been hearing, the team is not even picking up the phone on Metcalf trades. And don't get me wrong, they probably should be picking up the phone. I'm sure that whole... That phrase is a little bit of an exaggeration. Like, if a team calls you and says, hey, uh, three first-round picks for Metcalf, then, yeah, you probably might, you probably would say yes to that, right? Like, that that's just logical. If a team is going to give you three first-round picks for a receiver, you just got to do it. So, I find the fact that we're not even listening to offers right now pretty indicative of the fact that we're not... If, if this is true... Hard for me to believe we're even contemplating trading him right now. Uh, Connor Hughes has another tweet um, basically saying that Seahawks don't want to trade DK. So what it sounds to me like is that if a team actually wants to trade for Metcalf, and you could also say the same for the Titans with A.J. Brown, but that doesn't affect us, you're going to have to massively overpay. So... Looking at the two recent wide receiver trades, Tyreek Hill... Devontae Adams, <clears throat> if you plug that into the draft value chart, the trades for those players was somewhere around 1,100 to 1,150 points. The number 10 overall pick is worth 1,300 points. So if that was ever on the table, that means the Seahawks have already completely turned away a trade better than the Tyreek and Devontae trades. Now, it makes sense to me that DK would be worth more than those guys. DK is much younger. DK has upside. He could get better. Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams are not suddenly going to get better. They are what they are. They're only going to get worse as they get older. I don't think that's going to happen too soon, but they're not suddenly going to become better. Now, there's no room for them to go up, really. They're both top five receivers right now, almost certainly. But the point is that... A guy like DK should have more value than Tyreek or Devontae, as far as I'm concerned. DK's 24. Those guys are, I think, 28, 29, something like that. That should make a significant difference. But it wouldn't be such a huge difference that you would expect, like, double the trade, the, the, the value. So the fact that it's rumored that the Seahawks turned down 
the number 10 overall pick, even though at this point that's probably unlikely, is significant. And another rumor that I heard, and again, rumors, is that the Jets were willing to offer up their two second round picks this year. But, um, or, or well, two second round picks in general, and the Seahawks won't even pick up the phone on that. So you have to ask yourself, what would it take for the Seahawks to actually part with Metcalf? It seems to me like it would be a lot, like two first round picks plus, which given the offers that are supposedly out there, like I keep hearing two second round picks, it's basically a way of saying, no, we're not going to trade him. So seems to me Metcalf is going to stick around and get that extension at some point. And um, I know that a lot of people are looking at the fact that we haven't extended him as proof that we aren't going to and we're going to trade him. But I, I feel like what Schneider said, you guys know, I don't listen to a lot of what Pete and John say because I think it's crap. But John and Pete did come out and make a good point a few days ago when they said, this is how we do business. We deal with our free agents first. Then we get to guys who are under contract and need an extension. This is our process. That actually makes sense. I, I can't argue with that. And we typically do do that. We almost always do that. So... I don't think that's indicative of anything. <clears throat> it's not great because the market keeps getting reset with these receivers. Now, Stephon Diggs got extended, but it makes sense to me that you would want to have everyone wait their turn. Like that, that there, I don't think there's anything terribly wrong with that. So that's what I got right now. Seems like the energy has shifted heavily against a Metcalf trade. My current read is that he's going to get extended. So... I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Go Hawks. Uh, stream with the Hawks Nest on his channel tonight. Be there. See y'all later.